What is actually worse for Asians in America, to be a boba liberal or a boba conservative? What do these two terms mean? And why is this such a hot argument right now? Yeah, we got to talk about it because politics are all the rage right now. However, Andrew, I believe 70% of Asian Americans are pretty much apolitical. So this video today is going to be for the 30% that are fired up one way or another. We're talking about boba liberal, boba conservative. Realistically, I think only 10% of the AAPI population even knows these terms. However, it is a debate right now on Reddit and Twitter. Yeah, basically, to put it in short, a lot of people do not like either of these groups if you fall into them. However, people are kind of debating on which, uh, which one is the lesser of two evils. So I guess... This is the debate we're going to cover. We're going to go in-depth, guys. We are not getting super political, but we're definitely talking about politics here. So please hit that like button right now and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Real quick, Andrew, we made a whole video about what a boba liberal is. But long story short, it's an internet political identity invented for middle but primarily upper middle class Asians that are... Uh, parrot a lot of the opinions on the left but sort of throw an asian spin on it right mm. maybe a limousine liberal latte liberal but it's like a matcha latte liberal who knows guys you guys got to look more into it because otherwise i could explain it for too long a boba conservative andrew this is one of the first times we've ever talked about it on this channel andrew it is somebody who is asian that parrots sort of conservative talking points but may potentially even say them more harsh because they have the shield of being a minority all right. So, David, if most Asians are not even political, to be honest, like most Asians in America Asian are Americans have the lowest voting rate of any ethnicity in America of your major groups. We're talking about white, black, uh, Latino, Asian. Asian is at the very bottom in terms of engagement and political discourse and political voting. Right. So for an Asian to pick one side or the other, what are the reasons? There's four main reasons, and we're going to talk about this before we get into the comments section. Uh, reason number one is your just desire to be part of a tribe because you want to cheer for something. You want to feel part of something. Your friends are of this tribe, and so you're going to lean into it. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me when uh, in LA, there's a lot of families, Andrew, that have a lot of US. USC and UCLA flags, it's possible they don't even know a single person who goes to UCLA or USC, but they've bought into that tribalistic college football homerism. More, uh, moving on to number two, this goes true for both voters and politicians, Andrew. It's about whatever side will give them the most personal benefit or self-gain. Yeah, for example, uh, if you care about taxes, generally people say, oh, I'm going to lean more towards Republican. They give me more tax breaks. And then if you need a little bit more like social welfare, and uh, then you're going to lean more to the Democrat side generally speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to just go with whichever side, you know, embraces me more, treats me better. Maybe has like a better environment for me to swim in as a fish. Yeah, you know, like how people say, most people vote with their pocketbook. Um, a lot of people, Andrew, point number three, reluctantly buy into one side, even though they're not completely happy with it mm -hmm. because they feel like it's for the greater good. Or it's what you're supposed to do when you come to America. You're just like, well, you know, I just got here, so, you know, I just have to pick a side. So I guess I uh, reluctantly pick this side, even though I don't really know and I don't really feel strongly about them. I'm yeah. going to do it. And that's probably why Asians are not a highly leveraged voting block, to be honest, because even when they do pick a side, they're not like the 10 out of 10, uh, even though... Obviously, the Boba Lib and Boba Khan is more getting into the more extreme side. And last but not least, Andrew, motherland politics. The motherland. Yeah, this is obviously America has its hand in a lot of different countries and uh, politics around the world. So, of course, like the, 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 the relevant example is like a lot of Vietnamese in Orange County. They are very pro-Trump and pro-Republican. I love Trump, man. Because generally the Republicans and especially Trump are uh, anti-China or hard on China, anti-communist, right? Because a lot the Southern Vietnamese who came over here, they're anti-communist. So I guess that's a good example of motherland politics right, right. now. Right, and I guess they're, they're, they're rightfully so. I mean, you, everybody in America can care about the issues that affect their clan or their tribe in particular, right? Even if nobody else knows about it. Um, let's get into the comments section, guys. Like we said, we don't bat a thousand, but we do our best to break down these complicated issues. They are multi-layered. They're very messy. It's very gray. We're in the weeds, Andrew. The first comment was, both are so whack, man. Boba lives, they just do the bidding of like Nancy Pelosi, you know what I mean? And these like limousine liberals that are just like trying to box everybody in and what they could talk about. And Boba Cons, Boba Conservatives, they're just doing the bidding of what an old racist rich white person would want to say. But then they're like, they're henchmen with a minority face. Mm. You know, it's a funny question to me is like the average Democrat and the average Republican, like which one 
of the average version do you like? Because I think neither people, like most people don't like the extreme ends of either side. But like, what about the average? You know, the mean. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. I think the left is going to point at the right and say that it's fascist, white supremacist, hyper-capitalistic, like wants it to be all top down. And then uh, on the right, they're going to point at the extreme, like 20 out of 10 Democrat and what? To say they're an anarchist, communist, Marxist, uh, don't care about structures in society. Right, right, Those are right. like your ex- hyper uh, book and uh, extrapolation, right? They're both going to be pointing fingers at each other. I mean, uh, you guys let us know in the comment section below. Keep it civil. Um, this is a anti-Democrat thread, Andrew. Somebody said... Democrats see Asians as white adjacent, so they don't treat us like minorities to be handled with care like the other minorities. They hold us to a higher academic standard than even the white majority, which is insane because a lot of us come from poor families or at the very least parents who do not speak English and don't understand the system when they immigrate here. Mm, Yeah, I mean, uh, but I wouldn't say that the far right side cares about Asians either. I think they are just like, they're okay with Asians if Asians buy into their system. Which right. a lot of Asians sometimes do. Uh, but I guess this is the argument that, Andrew, I guess Democrats, because Asians hug the Democrats statistically more, they're getting more mistreated by the Democrats. Because the Democrats are saying, hey, I love everybody, I love all the minorities, but Asians, eh, that's my least favorite. So they're getting a little bit more tricked by the Democrats is what people are saying. Yeah, that because, is the argument. Because you feel like they love you more, but they only love you a little bit. Yeah, and somebody said this even display, uh, extends outside of the voter environment and into the workplace. Asians are viewed as great worker drones even in tech but our entire value is our roi we're not there for the fun vibes like a hot white girl or a funny white guy in the offices that's actually really funny um somebody said we are not similar enough to get truly accepted and we are not different enough to be loathed or loved just invisible dismissible yeah, and uh, some people would actually find some comfort in being this in-between spot where you don't get too much attention, but you get a little bit, and, and you're just kind of floating around in the middle. Somebody said, but the most liberal schools right now are not even grouping Asians as minorities anymore because they group us as white kids for statistical contrast. Yeah, that's definitely not helping us. But. Um. Okay, Andrew, we're going to get into the comments that are anti-conservative now. Okay. Uh, Anti-Boba Khan. Someone said, yeah, both sides leave us out, but you're even more ostracized socially when you pick conservative and hang out with all the rich whites or want to be rich whites. Plus, it gets more serious than that. And the boba libs at least eat Asian food and drink boba. It seems like boba cons completely reject even casual Asian cultural consumption. Yeah. Do you agree with that last point? I actually think I do. Well, I think that boba libs are more likely to go eat at mom and pop Asian American restaurants than a boba con In my mind. Yeah, I mean, I think boba liberals, generally people on the liberal side, are more open-minded to different cultures, and they're going to value maybe Asian culture at a baseline more, but not all Asians care if their white friend eats a lot of Asian food. You know what I'm saying? Or their black friend eats a lot of Asian food. Not all Asians are going to care about that, so it kind of depends on your priorities. Yeah, and I think that leads to a lot of confusion, because when Asian Americans move to America... It's unclear if our job is to promote Asian cultural consumption or is are we just representing Asian culture? So if people treat us nice, but we become completely Americanized and we're getting treated nice, is that still good? Because an Asian is living a good life, even if nobody around them or themselves is not doing anything Asian. Yeah, that's true. Um, Andrew, somebody said, yeah, Republicans might care about violent crime more against Asians as long as it's caught on camera. But I noticed that Republicans do not care about microaggressions against Asians at all because they got Trump calling it Kung Flu and all these other things. It seems like Boba Khans don't care about microaggressions. Is this, is this a good point? Yeah, man. I, Dude, I, I think a larger question is just like, who is more dangerous to the Asian community? A very conservative person or a very liberal person? I mean, most people would say dangerous-wise, I guess the conservative is more dangerous, but then... The liberal doesn't fully have the Asian back. I don't know, man. It's a very hard question, guys. Like I said, this is very complicated. However, Andrew, this is some valid points against the Boba Khans because this said that everybody who voted against the Asian hate crimes bill, literally everybody was Republican. Yeah. No, that's true. And then on the other hand, you could say that anti-Asian hate bill like didn't do anything. I don't know. Right. right but right. it was a nice thought. But then this uh, other argument said that Asia, uh, Republicans more stand for structures and anti-crime in society. So even if they don't vote for the anti-hate crimes bill, they're just more anti-crime in general. Mm. So there's, those are like two competing factors, right? This guy said, 
at its core, the Republicans run a platform of tradition, heritage, nationalism, and exclusion, none of which are going to benefit Asians um, unless we overcompensate and try to appeal to Anglo-Saxon exceptionalism at a 10 out of 10 level. Ah. Well, that was pretty interesting, guys. Like I said, interesting okay. internet comments. Um, somebody said, oh, by the way, guys, everybody complaining about crime from people who are impoverished. Conservatives actually probably originally created the conditions for poverty leading to attacks on Asians if we want to peel back the layers of the onion. Uh, I don't know all the history because uh, I think that's a hard one to say, but I think it sounds right. Right. It sounds right. Um, somebody said... Listen, guys, this is back to dissing the left. The major issue with the left, and, and by the way, I'm saying that both sides do not care about Asians, is but the left gets away with treating Asians badly. At least on the right, we know that the conservative Asians are literally just doing for pocketbook reasons or personal gain, but it's the left that actually sold out Asians on its ideologies because they told the Asians that they were going to get benefited, but they only hurt Asians. Mm. I think that, do you think that that's the biggest thing right now, Andrew, is that Asians are like, yeah, 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 I'm not saying I like the Boba Khans, but the Lib side did us even worse because we embraced it. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, it more violated the love or the, the trust of the Asian community. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's tough because the right side on the far, far right, you do have, like, politicians, really old politicians that are, like, in Congress that are, like, still, like, registered white supremacists right they're more like, the, like, it's still like a conventional like redneck hick yeah. like billy bob right that's pretty bad <laughs> yeah for sure for that's sure. bad that's bad I, and then on the left but uh what do you think about people saying that like you know uh hollywood did asian american guys really bad and it really like you know i mean even asian women kind of got done wrong but not as bad as the guys yeah, did and yeah. that was run by the liberal side yeah, I don't know. It kind of depends on your self-agency and which problems you think you can overcome easier yourself. Because if you're an Asian guy that feels like you're like, well, I'm confident either way, whether no matter what Hollywood or these liberals say about me, then you're not going to care about that. Yeah, somebody said that liberals have a general attitude towards Asians of, hey, yeah, you guys are different and get treated a little different, but you guys will be fine. Just support our side and we'll say nice things and buy the Trader Joe's version of Pad Thai, pho, sushi, and butter chicken and kimchi. I do think Asians, if you are an Asian, you need to have your priorities straight and this is going to help guide you to either party. I'm not saying you should choose either party. Maybe there's space for a third party somewhere, but... I'm just saying you got to have your priorities right or you're always going to be getting tricked left and right. Yeah, and of course, Andrew, there was a ton of comments. This probably made up the majority of comments. People were saying, dang it, it's just so confusing, man. Sometimes I'll step into a place and then this group, to me, minorities are trash-talking white people. Then I talk to a white guy in private. He's trash-talking minorities and nobody's caring about me. I'm still just invisible, dismissible. And I'm almost just like a sounding board for either side and everybody's just like sort of takes my allegiance for granted mm, yeah and uh somebody said you know the only reason i think boba libs are worse than boba cons is not on a one-to-one -one level but literally there's probably like a 10 to 1 or 5 to 1 ratio of boba libs that's why they're more annoying to me because i run into them more often yeah i do think that there are more uh boba liberals especially voicing themselves on the internet so that's why that's going to be an overrepresented group somebody said at the end of the day they're both the different sides of the same coin Asians who become Boba Libs are just buying into the good whites being the white knight benevolent ruler stereotype, which is actually, was actually pushed by this uh, famous philosopher poet called Ruyard Kipling, basically saying that whites are, are superior, but they're benevolent. Like, mm. nice, okay? That's, they're saying that that's the liberal perspective, the Nancy Pelosi perspective. And they're saying, versus a dominant, superior, Spartan 300 white ruler, which is a Viking Anglo-Protestant conqueror of the light, narrative that is on the right side which i would certainly say that like tucker carlson has oh, man, so basically they're saying stuff. that on each side uh a boba lib is just uplifting the ruyard kipling style and that a boba khan is just uploading uh, uh upholding the tucker carlson side crazy um let's get into the takeaways guys like i said we could go through you know, examples for like a trillion years. Um, you guys know where we stand. Literally, there are pros and cons to both sides. I can totally understand, Andrew, especially after going through this comment section, why 80% or 70% of Asians just stay out of this whole thing, right? Yeah. Uh, well, what's your analogy, David? What's an easier way of understanding all this? All right. The easiest way that I just broke it down in an analogy, it's almost like there's two nightclubs, right? And the nightclubs have multiple rooms in them. But basically... 
the line to get into this like Brooklyn backyard boogie party and where K Trinata, the DJ is playing, right? That's liberals, okay. right? Asians are in line, but they're pushed to the back of the line. And maybe like Asian males are pushed to the back, back of the line. Like, uh, but that's like a cool party, right? It's K Trinata. He's playing mixed genre, w- mute world music. Yeah. He's mixing EDM and hip hop, pop and this genre mashing is cool, man. Right. And then there's this other party at the country club the old world country club and they're, they're having a social at the country club. Mm. And there's a line to get into that club too in the Hamptons. And Asians are like in the middle of that line. We're not in the back, but we're in the middle. So it's also like, I guess, which one are you going to accept? Like one is like an old world heritage one that comes with some nice things, but some problematic things. And the other thing is this curl cool, I guess like genre mashing thing, but Asians are viewed as like the lowest in this Catronata hierarchy. Mm, interesting, interesting. Two different nightclub. We always got a nightclub analogy, guys. All right. Um, when I, I mean, listen, listen. I'll say this. There was a very interesting political cartoon that popped up. And this was, was supposed to be the Asian male perspective on both parties. Here, let me just pop it up right now. Where one sucks in, yeah, Asian men suck. And the other one is actually a girl saying, yeah, Asian men suck. And then there's an Asian guy off to the side like, man... What are my choices? Um, <laughs> I actually have uh, some interesting questions I would like to ask people. Uh, what if, David, people decided, and I'll just speak it from an Asian guy's perspective, but this could apply to all Asians. What if, as an Asian guy, you have to go to one of each of their rallies and see how you're treated at that rally? Ooh. Okay, so you have to go to a, Repu- a Republican rally and just... Network, nobody knows you, and just see what how you're treated. Are you respected? Are you treated nice? Is it fun? Right? And then you go to a Democrat one and see how you're treated, right? I think most Asian guys probably, if you made me say, would probably end up, I guess, having more fun at the Democrat one. I'm I'm just saying, I'm not saying that the Republican one wouldn't be fun though. Or how about this? It's just who's ever uh the women from which a uh, political party like Asian guys more. <laughs> yeah, that would probably be, be the left, honestly. But it's, it's, uh, uh, but it's close. I don't know. It's tough to say. That's I would say this. That's I'll such say a this. funny way to put it. If you could find the rare white friend within the Republican world who's really connected and from like an old money family, maybe his wife is Asian or something, so he respects you, it's true that in certain tiers of business, he can do a lot for you. If you can find the one rare guy who's not like, you know, who sees you as a equal or a peer or something. All right, like that. I got it, David. I got another proposition. I got another proposal. All right, we started, it's a third party. Shout out to Andrew Yang's forward party, which is trying to change how voting works, which I think actually is doing good work. This one is my fake party that I'm coming up right. with. It's called the good person party. It's just people who work hard, who don't commit any violent crimes, and their vote is worth two times as much as everybody else's. <laughs> no, you should, no, guys. No, Listen, and it's guys. not about how much money you make. It's not about how much money you can donate. It's about how hard you work and how little crimes you commit, and you get two times the votes, guys. Yeah. That is my proposition, Andrew Fung, twenty. I mean, listen, guys, I think it's the yin and the yang of it. Like, you need both sides. I think right now the modern iterations of both the left and the right right now do not really fully represent their ideologies. It's almost like the right is always like, yeah, we're for small government, but then they love military spending. And then the left is like, oh, yeah, we want to provide this thing, but it's like they're just mismanaging their budget, so they're not getting anything done. Basically, what do you do in a situation where it feels like both systems that you have to choose from are kind of inept right now? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a it's gonna be for Asians to get their priorities straight. You know, yeah. I because mean, also is it, is it gonna be a continuation of what Asians have been doing, which is worrying about themselves or and less of about the larger macro like downstream trends? Or how about this, Asians? Which political party do you think you can have more influence in, and which one can you change more? I mean, I guess I would say there is probably more Asian politicians on the Democrat yeah, side. Yeah, for sure. I would there say is, if, there like, visually, for I would sure, say so. For like, sure. When you look at the visuals, it looks like one party yeah. is mostly yeah, white. Yeah, I'm saying and brown, and, brown and yellow Asians. Yeah, sometimes all Asians are probably more but, heavier but on the But here's the truth, Andrew. Side. Neither side is going to challenge monopolies, corporatocracy, toxic industries. Like, I think that both sides right now are galvanized in small and medium issues, and nobody wants to address the ultra-big issues, Andrew, because those seem so embedded 
And guess what? Both sides are probably being funded by mm. people they need to deal with on the big issue side. All right, this is an unbiased view. Here's another solution. I got the solutions, guys. We need to inject more politicians who have STEM backgrounds. Mm. You can't just be a business person and you can't be a career politician. And a lot of lawyers, a lot of lawyers. Now, a lot of lawyers, because lawyers are super, dude, lawyers are super sharp. They know the law and how to get things done. But you, so you need some lawyers, but you also need a little bit more engineers, a little bit more tech people, a little bit more teachers. Okay, yeah. Yeah. you I need believe, more teachers. I believe the amount of STEM degrees in Congress and the Senate right now, I believe is below 10%. And yeah. realistically, it needs to be like 50. It needs to be at least 30%. It needs to be at least 30% STEM majors. Yeah, meet in the middle between 10 and 50. Let's get 30. Anyways, guys, that's, a, that's not a left or right thing. That's just my educational proposal. You so. know, I just don't understand why we can't have a government right now or like a political identity that seems like more well-balanced. You know what I mean? Like, it feels like, I don't know, is it, is it because we don't have enough VC points? It's almost like you're trying to make this 2K basketball player, but you just ran out of points, so you can't be good at everything. So you're just like, distri one side's like distributing all on these traits, and one side's all on these attributes. So nobody's well-balanced. Yeah, I don't know. You guys, you know what? I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Do you identify as either a Boba liberal or a Boba conservative? Or... Also, like, how should Asians decide on which side they choose? And do we have to? If we don't, then we are letting other people decide for our fate. But if we do choose, are we reluctantly choosing one? What are you choosing it for? Yeah. So what are your priorities as an Asian voter? Uh, let me know in the comments down below, guys. We're just trying to have a discussion, get people to think critically more. We want to be intellectually honest. Um, so, yeah. Again, thank you so much for watching the Hot Pop Boys. From silly to serious, you know, we're talking about it all. Until next time, we out. Peace.